Hey, Ross. Uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, let me open, before I talk about this fight, I think a lot of people remember your last fight, uh, the bloodiest fight in, in mixed martial arts history a little over a year ago. What did you take away from that battle and kind of the attention you received after such a crazy fight with Nicholas Dalby? Um, I think uh, I took away the fact I need to work on my defense a bit. <laughs> I'm good dishing it out, but maybe I take a bit too much sometimes. So uh, the, the layoff I've had since that fight, we worked a lot on... Um, my defensive uh, skills, not getting hit as much, being a bit more evasive. Uh, but yeah, we got a good, it was kind of like, it was a weird one because it was kind of like bittersweet. Obviously, none of us got the win. But obviously, it brought a lot of attention to both our names um, because of just the, the sheer amount of blood, to be honest. Um, but it was good experience, you know. It's, um, I think, you know, I've had fights where I've finished people fast and I've had fights where, you know, I show up and go to deep waters and like, if shit hits the fan, then I'm ready to go. Coming out of that fight, you had a lot of options for you, undefeated, you know, Cage Warriors champion, all those great things. Uh, what made you want to ultimately uh, sign with Bellator? What was it about Bellator that, that you said, this is where I want to fight now? You know what? I'm always looking to fight the top guys, and I feel like the Bellator, the Bellator welterweight division in particular, it's got some of the top, very top welterweights on the whole planet, you know what I mean? And uh, I know I can beat any one of them. So um, I thought, you know, this is this is the spot for me to show that I'm not only the best welterweight in Europe, I'm up there with uh, the best welterweights on the planet as well. So uh, after a beat MVP Saturday night, uh, we'll move on to world title number two. Going into this fight, you know, Michael Venom Page has, has obviously done a lot of great things, but the biggest uh, discussion or debate about him is hype versus reality. Is he a great fighter who just beats everybody or is he, you know, getting the lower level competition, he's picking them apart. And then when he fought Douglas Lima, he got knocked out. Where do you stand on the argument with MVP? Is it more hype or reality with him? You know what? I think I'd be stupid to say that he hasn't got the skills. He's obviously a very skilled fighter. He's got his kickboxing background. Um, he's a multiple world champion in that. Um, but I feel like I don't think he's fought someone quite as well-rounded as me other than, Obviously, Douglas Lima. Um, Douglas Lima and the Paul Daly fight are the ones that stand out. Um, and obviously, the Lima fight went the way it went. Daly fight was quite close. Um, and I just feel like I'm, um, I, I'm very well-rounded. And um, I just feel like, you know, he has got the skills, but I know I'm better. And um, on Saturday night, I'm just going to use my, my full well-rounded skill set as a mixed martial artist, a combat athlete, and as a fighter in particular to get the win. And last one for me, you know, signing with Bellator, you could have fought a lot of people. As you mentioned, there's a pretty deep welterweight division in Bellator. But getting a guy like MVP who has so much hype and attention behind him, how big would a win here, you know, kind of set the stage? I mean, do you feel like a win here right away could put you in title contention? I'll be asking for it either way once I beat him on Saturday. But here's the thing. I asked for MVP because obviously uh, – from the business side of things, I know uh, the weight that's behind his name and what a win against him will do to, for my career. You know, I'm, I don't know the guy enough for personal. It's just strictly business. So, um, obviously, scalping MVP is going to put me right up there and I'll be asking for the title shot. Okay, we do have a lot of questions. So, if we could limit to one or two, uh, we will go to Donna Corby. Hey, Ross, how's it going? Um, were you expecting to be offered a fight as big as MVP right out of the gate with Bellator? I know that certain guys who, who have names behind them, like yourself, have been given, um, let's say, e slightly easier fights than, than this out of the gate. Did, were you expecting to get such a big one? Uh, you know what? I feel like I could have got easier fights um, and still got a payday, but that's not the kind of character I am. You know what I mean? So... In terms of, like, did I expect it to happen? Maybe not, because I felt like I wasn't really... Sh from from uh, MVPs, from Michael's point of view, I felt like maybe there wasn't a lot in it for him, you know what I mean? Kind of in terms of, like, mm. you know, he's obviously got a big name, and what does a win against me offer him? But then, you know what? I'm a world champion. I'm undefeated. So here's his chance to show that whether or not he can do it against someone who's legit. And, you know, he's going to fail at that test Saturday night. Um, so, yeah, man, um, I'm looking forward to it. It, it. Here it is, you know what I mean? I, was, I didn't expect it to happen fully, to be honest. But it's, you know, you can play the card you dealt, man. I'll take advantage of this uh, this opportunity. What do you make of his style? He's uh, the kind of guy who, he showboats while he's fighting. He showboats after he's fighting. There was a whole discussion the last couple of weeks about uh, similar stuff, you know, where 
Israel Adesanya didn't. Um, he was he was pretty disrespectful after his fight. MVP is known to do similar stuff to that. What do you make of of the whole MVP style in the cage? You know, I don't really read into it too much. I feel like even though people say be yourself, obviously we've all got different characters in life in terms of like, you know, he's got, it's a business for me. It's a business for him. You know, he's got to sell, sell tickets. Um, so I don't really, uh, I take nothing personally. It's um, in terms of his style, it is what it is. But the, here's the thing. I'm, I feel like I've got the strongest mind in MMA period in the whole entire planet. So uh, none of his antics, whether it's before the fight or during the cage, uh, are going to affect me and I think his style although it's it, it's obviously a high level style it's nothing that solid fundamentals won't beat. Okay, we'll go to Jay followed by Darren. Thanks very much just a couple of quick ones Ross first of all I mean you've obviously had some big fights before in Cage Warriors the title comes to mind but the first event in France how does this uh, stack up? It's crazy you know what I uh Here's the thing, because like the, the previous question, I asked for, uh, to fight Michael and like um, I wasn't entirely uh, confident that I'd get it. Um, so that the, getting offered him in the first place was massive. And I didn't know anything about the French MMA history. So it was like uh, when I was told that, that was crazy. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's just so weird because I started this thing almost like, you know, 10 years ago, just as a, a young lad trying to stay out of trouble. And it's like uh, I never looked too far into the future and it just like, I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting. I woke up this morning. I'm a curtains guy. I woke up this morning. I like open the curtains and like they put me on the the top floor in like some fancy hotel in Paris. And it's just looking over Paris. And I'm like, freaking hell, man! It's like you know, just fighting is what I what I, what I love to do. And fighting's got me to this position. It's just it's just weird to be honest. Uh, it's not really fully sunk in, but it's gonna obviously once it's all said and done in many years to come. Once I'm done fighting, it's just gonna be a class lifelong memory and especially the whole like um the bbc deal that's came out today so it's like a, it's like a hat trick that you know the beat mvp on saturday night it's my first my, it's gonna be my first win on bellator it's gonna be the first uh, ever major event in, in france which i'm headlining that's the first show on bbc it's just class and it's my only other question uh you know we've been through the pandemic a lot of fighters have gone through it this is your first fight i mean what's training camp looked like for you with all the restrictions and everything uh, training camp's been fine, to be honest. I am um, outside of the fight, and I, I've got my own uh, martial arts MMA club as well. Um, so obviously during the, pan the, the pandemic and the lockdown, we cl uh, gyms weren't allowed to be open. So if anything, it's just me and I've had like, even though I love my gym and my coaching and all that, it's just been one less responsibility. I've pretty much only had to focus on myself throughout pretty much this whole year. So it's... Um, this game gave me time to, uh, you know, concentrate on my condition with my, my coach Ian Finley, concentrate on my skill side of things a lot with um, Cam Cheng and uh, Ross Circuit. Man, it's just, um, you know, it's it's been it's it's been a, I feel a bit in a really really selfish way for my personal fighting career. It's been uh, beneficial. Darren. thank you very much for your time here, Ross. Looking forward to everything that's coming up for you when you're. Having a big fight like the one that you have with Bellator coming up, how is your training regimen different than it is during, say, an off week or an off season? Do you mean in terms of like this week in particular or in general? Yeah, uh, in general, uh, nutritionally and fitness speaking, how does it compare? You know what? It's over the last, uh, I've improved each fight in terms of not only like, like the level of opposition I'm fighting, but in terms of like the way I approach training, like um, like I mentioned earlier, I've been working with a, a conditioning coach, a new conditioning coach for the past 12 months after the Derby fight, uh, Ian Finley. So I feel like, um, you know, that's been a big change uh, for, the, for the better. And like I've just taken things a lot more, even I've been taking things seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm training smarter rather than just training to, you know, you know, run myself empty every day. I'm kind of training smart, thinking about, all right, I've got to this level um, through some fights just because I know I'm a natural fighter. You know what I mean? That's either with you or it's not. And like, luckily, that's in my family's blood. But I feel like um, in terms of that and like the way me and my coaches have approached the training has uh, changed, changed a lot, to be honest. Um, and it's, yeah, just, just things for the better. I've brought on a new nutritionist for the first time for this um for this camp as well. I've never done that 
in uh, in Jacob Nutrition, and it's like I'm I'm a very big welterweight, and um, you know he's just going to make sure I go into the cage massive anyway, so he's gonna he's gonna make a big difference with this fight. Santiago. Hi Ross, greetings from Amsterdam. Two short questions for me. Are you happy that this fight is playing out at a catchweight? Yeah, real happy. Here's the thing. Um, obviously, we signed for 170, um, which I was happy about. Um, and then he wanted 175 for whatever reason. And in my head, I'm like, all right, that suits me because I'm really big for the weights anyway. Um, but obviously, we didn't let him have it too easy. So we had to uh, go a bit, a, a bit of back and forth between Bellator and him in terms of the deals. Um, but here we are at 175. It suits me down to a T. And, you know, it just means, like, it, it's just going to make out for a, a better fight. It's going to show who who's the better fighter on fight night because we we've got that little bit less of a stress on our body making weight. And we're both going there comfortable, have a good fight, and um, I made the best man win. And then last thing for me, Bellator has some excellent Scottish fighters on the roster now. What would it mean to you if Bellator would put up an event in Scotland? And do you think this will be a huge success? For sure, man. The Scottish MMA, the Scottish MMA scene's on fire right now. Um, you know, um, one of my, my good friends and training partners, Chris Duncan, got a big win in Milan. Um, he's an absolute beast. So um, between him and, and the other Scottish MMA fighters and myself, you know, we, we do big things, man. We sell out that arena. I know um, Chris Bongard's got a, a big uh, Celtic football team um, following, you know what I mean? So I don't say he, he'd probably drag a, a lot of numbers as well, man. So yeah, get it done, man. I'll be MVP on Saturday night. We've got these wins, man. We've got a lot of, a lot of hype. So who knows? Um, maybe Lena, Lima title shot in Glasgow in the, in the future. Okay, we'll take just a couple more. Uh, Lenny? How's it going, Russ? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Loud and clear. All right. Perfect. Perfect. An MVP this weekend. And you know, we kind of mentioned earlier that MVP is a huge name. He's very unorthodox. But you know when uh, Bellator gave, rang you and they said it's going to be MV action, how did you kind of feel about that? Um, can you say that last bit one more time, please? Okay. So when Bellator rang you uh, the opposition that it will be MVP, how did you kind of um, react to Michael Venom Page being your opponent? I was buzzing. Like I said earlier, I didn't expect to actually get off with it. So it was, a, it was like a dream come true, to be honest. And it's um, it's just so big because it's like, it's, it's just really motivating because I'm always looking to fight a better opponent than my last and just constantly uh, climb up the ladder and get to the top. So um, an opponent like MVP and uh, the stage that it's on is amazing in terms of like, the motivation it's given me for training. I've never trained so hard and so well in my life. And um, and it's just it's exciting. You know, we got um, two top uh, British welterweights um, battling it out first time on BBC, man. So delighted. I'm delighted. All right, two more, Ben. Hi, right, Ross. Uh, happy belated birthday for the other day. No, thank um, you. I I've seen a lot of um, American fans online who uh, may not be familiar with you and clearly don't watch European MMA, who have just sort of been dismissing your chances as just another can for MVP to crush. Have you seen any of that? And um, does that sort of under um, galvanise you, sort of being underestimated by some people? Um, yeah, I don't pay too much attention to it. I've, I've seen one or two comments. Uh, it's quite funny, to be honest, because I'm like, I'm sitting there undefeated with a world title around my waist and uh, I'm a can, so... I don't know what it says for the other ninety-nine percent of people fighters out there, but um, yeah, it is what it is, man. What what you're gonna do? It's kind of like in a way, it's kind of like you know what the saying goes: if you've got haters and you've got doubters, then you do something right. You know what I mean? It means I've got once you you got the attention and you, your name's on the platform, you must be doing something right. And um, yeah, I feel it on both sides, obviously, because um, every, every person, MVP fights the that he gets told he's fighting a can, um, but you know. I would hope that he knows that he's he's up against that on Saturday or else it's going to be a really, really bad night for him. And just one more from me. You posted a pic of you uh, five years ago working on a building site in Paris um, before you turned over to MMA full-time. Do you have any advice to any uh, young fighters who may be working a career alongside their MMA journey? I'll be contemplating as to whether or not to go full-time in the sport. Here's the thing. It's like, you're only, everyone's got to live and earn money. So I was in a position where before I quit the, my, my job on the oil and gas industry, I was able 
I knew that I was able to open up an MMA club. So you've obviously got to have some kind of income and uh, revenue coming in. But the way I looked at it is, like, I look at it in loads of terms of things because some people are like, oh, this, this sport's bad for you in terms of like your health and like, is the, there's nothing guaranteed in terms of like money and all that. But you only you only live once, you know, and you've only got a short period between, I don't know, like 18 to like, what, like 35, 36 now where you can compete in this sport, you know what I mean? So, um, and you only live once, man. It's a bit of a cliche, but you know, you give it a go, man. It, it, you know, if you if that's really what you want to do, then give it a go. But you've got to be realistic with yourself. If you're kind of like, if you've given up something, then you to chase that full time and give it your all. You know, don't just go half fast that you've got to, you got to give it your all. Kind of like the, the, you hear about a lot of people saying, ah, oh, blah blah blah, could have made it if it wasn't for this and that. Like, like stay away from the distractions, but that's the hard bit. I think anyone can make it, but the hard bit is staying away from the distractions, you know, staying on, on the on the roads and that. As long as you turn up, you're consistent and you're training smart, man, uh, you know you can do it. Cheers, Ross. All right. Thank you very much, Ross. Appreciate it and good luck. Thank you.